Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, one of the uh, group of API functions revolved around persistence. So here we are on the um, API um, wiki page, uh, and you can see here under persistence, there's three uh, functions: the add function. Uh, persistence put and persistence get. You'll see how these function in a minute when we're going to uh, use an example of a gauge and we're going to modify it to add some persistence to it. So essentially what persistence does is just adds a, a way of s storing or retaining the value. So when you shut down uh, your instrument or the sim or um, you and you want to recall um, the value of a particular parameter on um, the next startup um, your panel can start up exactly how you left it because it can retain those values in memory and recall them when you reopen your gauge. So we're going to uh, modify uh, one of the existing um, store instruments that hasn't got persistence and we're going to add persistence to it just to give you a flavour for how these persistence functions work and you'll see all three of these functions working in those particular things uh, in that instance. So if we just um, click on the individual functions very quickly on the um, wiki here you can see that uh, under persistence add um, you need a, a unique key so that's just unique to your um, particular instrument um, so you don't want to reuse the same name for different uh, persistence items so just keep that unique uh, fairly self-explanatory in terms of the function of what it is that you use I, I tend to use as a key the type uh, list down here in the argument table here so they can be the usual uh, int, float, double, byte etc all, all the different types there uh, depending on the type of um, information that you want to uh, store and retain and then an, an initial value that's only really used on the very first uh, time that persistence is used or if you clear uh, persistence down within Air Manager um, and it resets to zero then it would use that value as the initial value until you've stored uh, a later value in which case it would just retain and update whatever that later value is um, so you'll see how that works uh, in a bit um, I'm not going to click on the individual, uh, the put and the get, but you can see here, um, it says here, it gives an example here uh, uh, of what those two functions are. So one of them is used to get the value from the memory and the other one is obviously to put the value uh, to memory. So every time you want to overwrite the, the, the value that's in memory, you use the put function and then when you want to um, get that value back, you use the get function. So you tend to use the get function uh, in the example I gave earlier at the beginning of the instrument. So you recall the value that you previously stored away and then the put statement is uh, normally used whenever you update that particular parameter. So for instance, if you adjust a dial as we're going to do with the instrument that we're going to modify, every time you adjust that dial and it changes, you need to call the persist put function to up, uh, to, to send that new value to the memory. So it, it's maybe changing your graphic on the screen and it's uh, sending a new value to the to the sim um, but you're also in the background you're saving that value as well so if for instance you uh, suddenly lose power or you switch the sim off or whatever when you reboot everything again it will recall that um, value from memory when you power up if you use the uh, persist get function at the be beginning or somewhere near the beginning of your code so that's essentially what it does. Let's dive straight into the uh, particular instance. So the the example one that I'm going to use here is the Cessna 172 heading indicator. So in its basic form, you're probably familiar, it's just a directional gyro. And we're going to uh, add persistence uh, for this example to the uh, uh, heading bug. Okay, so normally, um, let's get rid of that for a minute. Um, let's bring the sim up. I've got the sim here. Okay, so normally the way this functions without the persistence um, is if I adjust this heading bug um, to a value let's say I'll get it roughly on 2.4 there you can see here the corresponding value uh, in the sim and on the air manager instrument there if I um, close down the um, the air manager instrument now if we change that value in the sim to something different over the other side nearer nearer the um, one two there if I open up the instrument again in air manager 
you'll see in the sim it's still around about the 1 2 mark and you can see in the instrument now it's 1 2 so it didn't retain the value that we previously set to here but it's taken the value um, from whatever the sim was do and I, I've, I've done a little bit of testing with this and it also that also works that data ref that um, stores that information works cross um, aircraft so if you were to for, in, for instance leave that on uh, 2 4 in this Cessna and then jump into the Baron uh, for instance and then start playing around with a heading bug when you jump back into the Cessna it won't be back it, the heading bug won't be on whatever you left it in when you was in the um, Cessna it will be on whatever it um, you last left it on in the Baron that's within the sim now if this DG was unique to the Cessna panel then it would with persistence it would re it would retain um, the persistence for the last time this gauge was um, operated so if this was unique to the Cessna and only the Cessna uh, you only use this uh, DG on, uh, within the Cessna that whenever you whatever you adjusted the value to within the Cessna if you open a different panel up for the Baron then uh, the two different DGs would be uh, like in the real world they would be stored separately one for the Cessna one for the Baron and one for whatever other air aircraft you wish to use it with so um, let's um, delve into the uh, how we managed to turn that in uh, into persistence in terms of getting the operation to remember and then we'll come back and we'll do this um, little test again and you can see uh, how it operates differently so let's pull up the uh, code for that particular instrument. So this is um, the original uh, code for the original instrument. And you can see I've got, if we just scroll down here, just in the initialization uh, section of this particular instrument, um, I've got some uh, commented out code and I've got one little persist put here. And I'll explain, I'll, we'll uncomment these one at a time and I'll explain what these are doing. So this is the only additional code that I've added to this instrument to, to add the persistence. Um, sometimes it would be even less lines than this just using the persist functions if the gauge was um, coded in such a way that you didn't need to add some of this other stuff but I'll explain what that's for in terms of um, uh, linking in with the persistence to get the gauge to function uh, how we need it to function so the first the very first line here is um, heading persist uh, sorry uh, persist add is the function we've just give it a, an ID here of heading persist ID so we store uh, away as you do a similarly for images and, and uh, lots of the other functions where you need an ID to refer back to later with uh, some of the other functions so we create an ID and we're saying with the persist add we're going to give it the unique key if you remember from the wiki page that we looked at we're going I'm just going to call it heading bug because um, that's a good description of, of what it is I know it's a float um, type value so um, all the different degrees of the uh, directional gyro there all the way up to sort of uh, from 0 around to 360 with with the decimal places so it's a float value and I'm going to give it an initial value of 0 so just for want of choosing a better value I'm just going to choose value uh, 0 so the first time I start you won't see it on this particular example because I've already um, proven that this code works so the persistence and I haven't cleared the persistence down uh, within Air Manager so let's just show you that very very quickly if you go to the settings tab of Air Manager, uh, you can see at the top here it's got um, these two clear buttons. So one particular one we're interested in here is clear persistence. If I click on that to clear the persistence, it basically clears out all of the memory for all of the instruments that that you've asked Air Manager to um, to store, however long that's been uh, going up, uh, on for. So essentially, when you do that, you you clear all those memory settings down, and so because it wouldn't know that there was anything in there for that um, initially when it first runs this uh, persist add if, if it doesn't find anything within the, the persistence uh, storage area then it would set the initial value to zero so it really only uses that on that first time or if you if you use that clear um, clear persistence then obviously that resets it and then it would use that that zero again but other than that it, it, it only ever uses that zero in those uh, is that in those instances so it sets up our persistence for us, but it doesn't really do a lot uh, when it uh, is set like that. So what we need to be able to do is use the persist get and the uh, persist put, uh, as I showed earlier. So the very next line is um, 
setting up a variable and the variable the name I've chosen for this um, example is last heading bug so um, I'm basically recalling the last heading bug setting and I'm going to give it the variable name last heading bug and I'm going to use my persist get function with the heading persist ID that we set up over here to basically so this is like a a, a, a pointer to the to the persist ID uh, with this unique key heading bug to say go and get me the information f uh, related to that um, persist ID with that unique key and give me the value back and store it into last heading bug so essentially it, it recalls that information so in this particular instance on the first power up it will have put it to zero and it would just recall the zero um, but as we as we progress on and it doesn't use that VLA, uh, zero and it uses the other values that we would have set with the put later on in the code then it would recall the put the last put value and so you can see how when you when you first power up during this initialization uh, this last heading bug is now a variable that um, stores whatever your heading bug was last time round, uh, i.e. last time this uh, put was used. So here now the, the following bits of code is really because of the way this gauge is um, is coded and so what I've had to do is to, to actually set, uh, w once I get that variable uh, last heading bug I need to be able to do something with it and you can see here I've got within this uh, X plane data ref uh, right because that's the sim I'm, I'm doing this um, demonstration with I want to write the value um, last heading bug which is what we previously recalled to a heading bug data ref so all, all I've done here is I've basically said this instrument has got um, a user property for whether or not you're using the pilot or the copilot side of the X-Plane um, heading bug setting. So essentially this user property which was already, uh, where are we, there we go, user property already part of this instrument um, and it uses it for some other things as well so I'm just using the same user property. I'm saying if the user property uh, prop VX as it's so called um, is set to pilot then the data ref that you want to write to is that one and else if it's the copilot one you want to write to that one they're essentially almost the same data ref it's just got an extra two on the end here for that so that's all that's doing uh, and then I've wrapped this I found that when testing this um, because of the timing of the gauge and you'll have to experiment with this a little bit in terms of how long your code is you might be able to put this this um, explain data ref right at the end if you've got a lot of code and it, and it may run okay but what tends to happen is if you don't wrap it in this little timer function then um, the when the data refs first run by the time this write is issued it, it doesn't actually uh, with the timing get into the sim and this this um, data ref subscribe grabbing the information back again it hasn't actually got the new value and so it, it, it doesn't uh, work properly so to, to make that function and to allow that um, allow all, all this code to run and then once it's finished I've wrapped this little explain data ref right in a little timer routine that essentially waits 300 milliseconds before it runs the data ref right so it allows everything else to happen and then after 300 milliseconds it just says can you please send that last heading bug uh, piece of information uh, to the particular data ref that we chose and therefore updating the sim um, every time we start the the new instrument with the last retained stored value so as I said that, that those last few lines are just peculiar to the way this gauge is is coded um, you may have to do something similar to that with other uh, gauges. Other gauges may be writing directly to the um, data ref uh, to update them anyway, in which case uh, you could probably just piggyback this uh, on the back of uh, writing to the data ref at some point within the code. But this uh, instrument um, uses the um, commands to increment and decrement the, the bug. So the command write, uh, it sends the commands to the sim and then the sim updates the data ref so it's not actually a direct write to the data ref which is why I've had to add it up here at the very beginning in the uh, in the initialization section so the very last line of code 
is just in the uh, new heading bug uh, function. So the new heading bug function, if we just scroll down and look at the, the subscribes very quickly, the new heading uh, bug callback here, uh, a, you can see um, the, the two subscribes that are subscribed to there for the new heading bug function. So when we come back up to uh, new heading bug, uh, there we are. Um, that would basically just get the head, uh, the heading for the uh, rotating uh, DG disk and the bug value. Uh, so it used them previously um, to rotate um, the bug on the uh, on the outer of the of the scale of um, the Air Manager instrument, such that it was in the right location. But I've added. Um, because we're getting every time uh, those values update, of course, it call, it calls back this thing. So this is a good place for me to put my persist put. So every time them values change, particularly the one that I'm interested in is the bug uh, value. Um, every time they change and it runs this function, as well as rotating the bug, it also silently in the background puts the new bug value to the head in persist ID that we created uh, early head in persist ID. So every time that bug changes, whether you change it in the sim or you change it within the Air Manager soft dial, or if you were to modify this gauge to add a hardware uh, encoder dial, the same. If it calls back this function, then the persist will uh, write the new value to the heading persist ID, and therefore next time you start the instrument, it will recall that uh, heading persist, uh, and you'll get the new value. So. I've uncommented all that now, so we'll let's save that instrument and we'll open the Air Manager instrument. And see how we get on now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the heading bug. Oh well, we'll use around about one two again. So I've saved the bug position there. I'm going to Let's just say, you know, I might have moved it a few times. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna shut down uh, that now. I'm gonna go and fly a different aircraft, or I'm gonna shut the sim down completely, or I'm gonna come back into the sim and I'm gonna mess about. But the bug setting may have got changed, or when we restart X plane, it may just come up um, at zero in the in the north, and not where we perhaps would have left the. Um, Bug. So I'm going to move the bug well away from where we left it, and then when we restart the instrument, whoops, let's get that down. You can see it's already flicked uh, all the way back round to the 12, and you can see it's sitting on the 12 again. So let's just try that one more time, just so you can see. This time, I changed the bug within Air Manager. This time, I'm going to change the bug within the sim, just to show you that it, it still works there. So this time, I'm going to change it round to uh, round about. 2-1. Okay, so it's a 2-1 in the sim. That's obviously synced to the air manager instrument, as, as would be normal. Um, and then we're going to... I'll try and get this out of the way. Uh, there we go, so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so we're going to stop the instrument, and then we're going to change that to something completely out of the way. Uh, and we're looking for it to jump back to around about the 2-1 position, which is where we last left it. Uh, and then when you rerun the gauge again, or you open your panel, which that, that gauge is uh, part of your panel, you can see it flicks round to 2-1, and it's uh, at 2-1 there. So that's what um, Persist essentially does. It stores those uh, positions, and you can add those functions into existing instruments if they haven't got them already. Or if you're coding an instrument from scratch, then uh, you can use the Persist functions to store a multitude of different data types um, for things like uh, remembering bug positions or barrow settings or whatever you want to, uh, to retain next time you restart. Uh, the sim. Hope this has been helpful. Um, join us again soon for another video in this series. Cheers. Bye bye.